The Vibe at Vibe is sponsored video content brought to you by Med City News. Hello and welcome to The Vibe at Vibe. I am Oranthuti Parmar, Editor-in-Chief of Med City News, and I have with me Aloha McBride, Global Healthcare Leader for EY. Welcome, Aloha. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So you guys just released a report that talks about adoption of AI. Can you talk about the top three strategies that healthcare executives must follow to successfully do so? Yes, absolutely. So first off, leaders have to commit to AI at scale. And what that means is they really need to have a vision for what AI looks like in their organizations, followed quickly by a very clear strategy to direct the organization. Secondly, when you think about AI, certainly governance is critical. So most of our organizations are start of maturing with data governance, we need that to accelerate to AI governance because using AI, you really have to understand how the data is changing. You have to understand change management within your organization. You need to be mindful of biases and hallucinations that may happen with the data. And certainly we know that demographics change, care models change, you need to be keeping up with this. I think and lastly, maybe I'll throw an extra one in there, data infrastructures, critical scalable, interoperable, flexible, having common standards, really important. And last thing is training. We need to prepare the workforce. They're not ready for this yet. And we need to have foundational knowledge in AI, understand the technology, at least at a basic point of view, as well as the risks. The other thing that I thought was really interesting is, you know, we talk so generally about AI, right? And your report had a concrete example of where it's working. So I was fascinated to read this example from Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands, which has developed a surgical prediction model. So can you share some details about that? Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Davies, amazing, amazing clinician there. They basically studied and found out that only 2% of AI that was being really tested around the globe in this area was getting to scale, 2%. The rest was stuck in pilots or died on the vine, if you will. So what they did is they used their data to really understand their patient population. Those individuals that were in med surge, in ICU, when they needed to be discharged, not based on just the protocol for when they needed to be discharged, but really looking at their clinical conditions. What they found is generally they could discharge individuals two days earlier. So just imagine the impact of that, not only from a patient point of view, being able to be at home, but from a cost savings, from a throughput from within the hospital, really fantastic revolt. And they have done amazing at really sharing that globally. And then are you able to talk a little bit about what kind of data they used to predict that? Was it just the person's vitals or there was some other information too? Absolutely. No, they were looking across the entire patient record. So they were looking at each disease state, what the clinical indications would be for how that person was progressing to wellness, whether or not given their medication, given their other comorbidities, it was appropriate. So really modeling those patients to understand when they were ready to be discharged. Mm -hmm. And being able to predict with the data that they had historically and understanding other patients like those patients that were in the hospital. And what did they find? Did they see that the patients were being discharged when they're supposed to be or were there delays or, or just people getting released too early? Yeah, well, actually, they were holding people too long, but they found they really didn't need to stay in the hospital for those extra two days. They could go home and be fine, and that's exactly what they did. They changed their protocol, and now they're, they're trusting in that data, and they're having great results. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, Gen AI, Chat GPT, all these terms are so buzzy right now, but I worry that people are going to rush into it to implement these tools when they don't have the right infrastructure in place. So in your opinion, since yeah. you're the expert, do you think payers and health systems have the right in infrastructure to safely and effectively adopt AI? Not yet, but they're getting there. They're really getting there. And I can tell you that many of our clients are asking for help in this area. They're wanting to create those data infrastructures that allow data to come together seamlessly. But I have to tell you, they're really more focused on getting the governance right, which I believe is the more critical part, really understanding governance, understanding how to work with your governance structure, testing it out with some of the low risk use cases, and getting comfortable with how this works within the organization. Because we're talking about one AI algorithm today. In the future, we're going to have a portfolio of AI to manage. 
and we need to really think critically about what our operating model looks, needs to look like in order to manage that going forward safely, ethically, responsibly. So those were some pearls of wisdom from Aloha here. Thank you so much Thank for you. spending time with us. And that's the Vibe at Vibe.